So this is going to be the last lecture from me. Uh, so in the last three lectures, I described how the s duality of n equals two supersymmetry. I guess I should wait a bit more. <clears throat> more people than expected are coming back, thankfully, <laughs> to my talk. Right. So, so far, I talked about the s duality of n equals two for the theories. Uh, of type SU2 and how they can be understood from starting from 6D theory with 2 comma 0 supersymmetry, again of type SU2. Um, all the essential features of the duality, I think, was already in this type SU2 case I talked about for three hours. And in this last lecture, I just want to generalize that to SUN. Uh, that gives you a lot of technical complications, and, uh, but that's inevitable. So, <laughs> yeah, somewhat SUN is rather difficult compared to SU2. So please bear with me. So, let's remind ourselves what we learned yesterday. So if we start from 6dn equals 2 comma 0 theory of type SU2 and put it on three puncture sphere, each puncture carries one SU2 flavor symmetry. I explained to you how you compute the superconformal index of this system. So let me remind you the definition of the superconformal index. So in this particular case of just having the var variable Q, uh, I forgot to mention, but the exponent simplifies. It's just a difference between the scaling dimension and the SU to R charge. And you can insert flavor symmetry element element. And I told you how, without knowing, knowing in the first place what this theory is, uh, you compute this SCI using the fundamental fact of the 6D theory that it becomes 5D super young mills if you compactify on S1. So the SCI is given by this nice formula, Ka, Kb, Kc, divided by K0, summation over all of the representation, chi A, lambda, chi lambda B, chi lambda C, divided by chi lambda uh, Q to the one half. So this is, this is the basically partition function of 2D Yam mills on this three punctured sphere, Q deformed. And uh, for today's purpose, the only thing you need to know is that this Ka has this form, chi adjoint of A, Q plus OQ squared, and chi zero is basically just one plus OQ squared. So not so difficult. So how do we know exactly what 4D theory this three punctured sphere is? Um, in my lectures, I started by telling you what this is, but pretend we don't know that. But we can expand this to some order, right? So what would be the leading contribution? Of course, the leading contribution is one. The next contribution, just in fact, starts at order Q to one half. So, and for simplicity, let's just consider the expansion until OQ. So you can just forget about KA and K0, right? So all you have to do is to expand this part. The trivial representation gives you this one. The uh, next 
contribution comes from the doublet representation. So what you have is that, well, I guess I should first explain how it works. So doublet, doublet B, doublet C, and you need to consider this. So this is Q minus one half plus Q one half. But in any case, this is just Q minus one half one times OQ, right? So for our purpose of expanding things and up to order Q, this is just becomes Q to the one half. Dot, dot, dot. So this factor, Q to one half, is the telltale sign of having a free hyper. Uh, from the representation theory of n equals to s super conform algebra, if you have something like this, the theory is guaranteed to be free hyper. And you see how these free hypers transform under the flavor symmetry. So these are in the so-called tri-fundamental. So thus we see that this is <laughs> corresponds to uh, free hyper multiplet of this form, Q, A, B, C, right? And once you understand that, now we can understand the s duality of two tri-fundamental coupled together, uh, G, C, D, in the following way. So you can continuously change the shape of the Riemann surface you compactify, the six-dimensional theory. So you get dual objects and a dual gauge group. Yesterday I also told you how to read off the coupling constant here. So the coupling constant of this guy is basically given by R5 over R6, where R5 is this length and R6 is this radius. So if you want to make this very strongly coupled, you need to make this ratio very small. So you need to uh, crash them together in this direction. And in that limit, you can split them on the vertical side so that you again find the dual weakly coupled gauge group. So that was how we understand the s duality of n equals two. So SU2 gauge theory coupled to four flavors because this counts as two flavors. So far so good. So all I want to do today is to generalize everything to SU3 and up. So the natural thing to do is to change this to SUN. So I'm sorry for doing that. This is very easy to do on the blackboard, but for those who are taking notes in a traditional notepad, this is very bad. If you are using tablet, then you can just all copy the content and modify. I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> so I'm going to... Uh, change everything to N. This, <laughs> I'm so sorry. The only thing you need to change is the argument here, right? So as I told you, the argument becomes a certain diagonal matrix of this form, Q N minus three, dot two, dot, 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 Q one, two, right? So, what is this theory? So, from this on, I can rewrite everything because things are significantly uh, different. I might reuse this, though. So let's just consider the next case, n equals three. What would be the expansion of the superconformal index? It starts with one. The next term, uh, is in fact, so let me just write down what this object is. 
So in the denominator, you have chi lambda diagonal uh, q plus 1, 1, q minus 1, right? So clearly, there's no fractional power of q. So the leading contribution is OQ. So let's com compute uh, the super conformal index up to OQ squared. Then, uh, all the Q term comes from two contributions. One contribution from here, from the K factors, and from this term when lambda is a fundamental or the anti-fundamental. So, let me just write the contribution from Ks. Chi adjoint B plus chi adjoint C. So these are the contributions from the Ks. And also you have this contribution, just as before. Q plus minus 1 plus 1 plus Q to the 1. Uh, chi box A, chi box B chi box C, and similarly, contribution from the anti-fundamentals. Uh, I'd like to keep it, so <laughs> I'm so sorry for going over. So this is it, but as I explained, in the case of N being two, this is at this order, you can just approximate as Q, right? So this is the matter content. Now, we don't see any factor of Q to the one half. So this theory is no longer a hypermultiplet. It's something much more complicated. And for those of you who love exceptional groups, this appearance of a joint, three adjoints and a product of fundamentals is a telltale sign that this has E6 symmetry. So what is going on is that E6 has SU3A times SU3B times SU3C subgroup. So this is rank six. This is rank six too, because SU3 is rank two, and there are three copies of it. And E6 is adjoint, is 78 dimensional, which everyone knows. <laughs> uh, this decomposed under this decomposition into a joint of one, a joint of another, a joint of the third, and product of three fu fundamentals and product of three anti-fundamentals. So, and this structure persists to higher order. It's a fun exercise if you know how to use Mathematica or other comp computer algebra system to compute higher orders and check everything works. So when n is 3, uh, people have found that this particular three-punctured sphere theory is no longer a free hypermultiplet, but this is I mean, this theory is known as uh, E6 theory of Minahan and Nemesh Chansky. So, this theory was introduced in. I don't remember, uh, 2009, sorry, 97, it's completely different. So it's known for quite some time, but it's a non-trivial superconformal theory. So using that knowledge here, we now know some strange duality. So I just changed this to three, SU3. This is Minahan Nemechansky's E6 theory. And this is also Minahan Nemechansky's E6 theory. So you start from two strongly coupled SCFTs. You couple them. 
to gauge group SU3. And this SU3 gauge group is uh, exactly marginal. So you can choose its tune, its coupling constant. You make it very strong. And then you have dual minahan nemechansky Z6 theory here, and dual minahan nemechansky Z6 theory coupled to dual SU3. So this is the natural generalization of SU2 4 flavor, S duality 2 uh, SU3. This is the most natural one. But um, from the perspective of, of an old guy like me, this is not very satisfactory because this is a mysterious theory, another mysterious theory coupled to something which we know. This is gauge group and you make it strong and it is self-dual in some sense. So it's a new knowledge about strongly coupled n equals to theory in four dimensions. But this is just too mysterious, right? So I'd like to understand what happens when, sorry, two, t, two Minahan Nemechansky E6s. But I'd like to understand what happens when you just take as n equals two, SU3 plus NF equals six. So this is a more conventional gauge theory. And I'd like to understand what is the dual description when the gauge coupling of this theory is made strongly coupled. So that's what I'd like to do. But as you will see, analysis of this system, which has a simpler Lagrangian description, is much more complicated than the analysis of this SDRity involving two uh, strongly coupled SCFTs. So one lesson we will learn today is that Lagrangian theories in 4D are not always easier than non-Lagrangian <laughs> theories. So as you will see, the analysis here would be very, very complicated. But let me go on. But before getting there, let me just say a few words about exactly what happens when n is not three, but some gen general n. In the general n case, if you do this computation, it doesn't fit with anything known before 2009. So for general n, this three function sphere theory has a name TN introduced by Davide Gaiotto. I asked Davide what T stands for. He told me it stands for theory. <laughs> yeah, but this is the name we use. So in general N, again, you have this S duality relating two TN theories coupled to SUN gauge group. And the dual is again SUN coupled to two TNs. Very symmetric, very understandable, but you don't know exactly what this TN theory is. Well, since 2009, we have been working on the <laughs> analysis of these TN theories for quite some time. So we know quite a lot about these theories, but still they are not Lagrangian theories. So we would like to understand what happens if you start from SUN with two N flavors. But again, the analysis would be very, very complicated, much more complicated than this nice case. So Lagrangians are not always good. Right. So to do this, uh, I need to introduce another concept, another technique, which is very often used these days by people who does the analysis of non-perturbative analysis of supersymmetric field theories, which is called partial closure of punctures. So that's a funny name. So for the next 20 minutes, I need to introduce to you this concept. So, and also there's something called complete closure. 
But the complete closure is a case of partial closure. So I always call them partial closures. So, uh, so what going, what, what's going on? So in general, suppose you have a given a n equals 2 SCFT. Let's call it curly T with flavor symmetry. GF, what kind of properties do you have? Of course you have current uh, operators for this flavor symmetry, but thanks to the supersymmetry, you can have more operators, you have more operators. Acting by SUSY once, you have fermion operator, and acting SUSY twice, you have, in fact, scalar operator, labeled by our joint, but uh, because we are using n equals two supersymmetry, in fact, you have SU2R index. And two SU2R indices, and this is symmetric. So this is our SU2R triplet, our GF adjoint, scalar. So this is a very general property of SCFT. And in the jargon of class S theories I've been talking about, a puncture on a Riemann surface corresponds to SUN flavor symmetry. So a puncture means flavor symmetry. So, but before getting there, let's give an example. So consider by fundamental hypermultiplet. By fundamental hyper consists of n squared fields, q twiddle a i, both a and i are one to n. Then there's a flavor symmetry acting on the index a and the index i, as always. So in this case, gf is sun times sun. Well, for simplicity, let's just consider un times un. Then there should be three scalar operators, right? So they can be written very explicitly, mu plus, mu zero, and mu minus. And uh, if you consider un acting on A, say, you just perform a contraction. And uh, again, you perform some contraction. And finally, uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm con getting confused here. I, A, B, I minus Q twiddle B I Q twiddle dagger I B. Right. So in the n equals one notation. So as you see, this component is a chiral superfield. I mean lowest component of the chiral superfield. This is the standard D term of the flavor symmetry. And the third component of SU2R is this antichiral field. So this is, you get the idea. So in the case of free hypermultiplet, which is a special case of SCFT, you can write it down explicitly. But the good thing about this is that the existence of the mu's are guaranteed by just superconform algebra. So they are guaranteed to exist for any non-Lagrangian theory. So what you do, suppose GF contains some SUN, you do the following operation. So take mu plus, which is a scalar field, which is an n by n matrix, and you give a verb of the following form. So it's just almost zero everywhere, except in this form. So this is a Jordan 
normal form of a nilpotent matrix. So in this case, I'm use, using an example n is 6. And as you know, Jordan normal form of a nilpotent matrix is formed by fundamental Jordan blocks. So in this case, you have 3 by 3 Jordan block, 2 by 2 Jordan block, and 1 by 1 Jordan block. So such a uh, wave is characterized by this decomposition of 6 into 3 plus 2 plus 1. You can encode the same information by drawing a Young diagram consisting of columns of height 3, 2, 1. So this is a standard convention. So you can give a wave like this. What will happen? In general. So you started from a SCFTT and you gave this wave mu plus. So you get some different theory. I don't know what to, uh, nobody has decided the notation, precise notation, but let's say 3 plus 2 plus 1. And uh, in the IR limit, you get something, but there are some fields you are guaranteed to get because here we have SUN flavor symmetry, right? And we are breaking that symmetry by giving a wave to some fields. So definitely you should have some number gold storm modes. Right? So from the procedure, you know you, need, you definitely get some number gold storm modes. So you take away that from the IR limit and you define the rest to be the partially closed theory. So this is the definition. And, and as, we'll, as I will tell you, a complete closure corresponds to giving a biggest wave. So mu plus is given by this biggest Jordan block. So this corresponds to n equals n. So the good thing about complete closure so and partial closures is that We can start from this mysterious TN theory and perform this partial closure to get uh, free hypermultiplets. So I'm going to tell you that if you start from TN theory, so they have three punctures, and uh, undeformed punctures are called full punctures. So full punctures are punctures before the partial closure. And as I emphasize, in, there are three SUNs, each associated to each puncture. You pick this SUN, one of this, and perform partial closure by this particular Young diagram, n minus one, one. This means you have this Young diagram and do this operation. So you start from this TN, do this operation, and in fact you get exactly this, n by n free hypers. So I'm going to explain to you exactly how this arises. But let's assume what this happens. Uh, I mean, what this means for s duality, assuming this fact. So 
Assuming this fact, we can start from considering this three puncture sphere. So in my notation today, this star stands for partially closed puncture of using this data. Partially, partial closure is just this giving of wave and stripping away of all the number goes strong modes. So, so this is, this is our n by n Qs, right? And you connect this with another three puncture sphere. So this is again n by n Qs. This part gives you SUN gauge theory, yeah, vector multiplet, right? So on this side, you know that you get uh, SUN gauge theory plus NF equals 2N matter content because this counts, and if you consider A as gauge index, I counts as flavor indices, therefore, this counts as n flavors. This also counts as n flavors. Together, you have two n flavors coupled to this SUN gauge field. So this is the kind of system you want to analyze whose uh, strongly coupled limit. And its SDO is, of course, obtained by crashing this together, you split them on the other direction. So you get this system, right? So all you have to do is to analyze what this is. And I will analyze this system by considering an intermediate step. We start from this intermediate step. You know what exactly this is because this is, this part is just three punctured sphere theory. So this is TN theory, right? This part is a dual SUN gauge group. And finally, this part has two full punctures and a puncture of type star. This is the bifundamental hypermultiplet. So this is n flavors of SUN, Q and Q twiddle, right? So this final SDO form of this uh, SUN plus 2n flavors is obtained from this funny system by partially closing this puncture. So we are going to cl partially close this puncture to this type. This way you can understand what is going on on the SDO side of the SUN with two N flavors. So that's what I'm going to do. So I still have 30 minutes. So hopefully I can get to the <laughs> end of the analysis. So this is the rough idea of how you understand the SD wall of SUN with 2N flavors. So this will be more complicated than just analyzing the duality of TN coupled to TN. Good. So let's perform one example Uh, of closure in the simplest case. So let's consider SU2, right? And suppose you have a theory like this and pick a puncture. This has SU2 associated to it. So you have mu plus field. And let's give it a wave, 0, 1, 0, 0. In the case of SU2, there's no other way to do something non-trivial. Um, so how do we analyze this? In this case, we know what this is as a gauge theory. So this is, this can be analyzed using 
this trick. So you have this puncture connected this way. So let's call this puncture B, puncture A, puncture A, and puncture B. And this is a gauge puncture, additional puncture. So this part is just Q, uh, A, I, U, say. It's a tri-fundamental. Let's say SU2A acts on QA, SU2B acts here, and gauge acts here. In this case, mu fields can be explicitly written. So mu AB with index down is given by QAIU, QBJV, epsilon IJ, epsilon UV. So this is a standard results just following the super conform algebra. And because I used two epsilon symbols, A and B are automatically symmetrized, right? So this is in the adjoint of SU2, A, which is as it should be. And uh, so this is written in the way one index is lower, one index is upper, but I'm now using both indices lower. So to set this verb, what you need to do is to set mu plus one one to be one and the rest to be zero. This can be arranged by giving a verb to AIU in this quite obvious way, delta A1, epsilon IU. So you, I'm, I need to give a verb to the hypermultiplet. So what this does is that you need to use this funny operation of using epsilon symbol relating two different flavor symmetries. So what happened is that SU2B times SU2 gauge is broken down to diagonal subgroup. Another thing is that what, let's, let's analyze what happens if you act, act to this verb, this SU2A flavor symmetry. We are breaking the flavor symmetry by giving a verb, therefore there should be number gold stone modes. So what would happen in general? Well, A appears only here. So what happens is that this delta AI, A1, just becomes some general vector, QA. So this is the number gold stone mode. So what happens is that uh, in this operation, SU2G is broken, and Higgs mechanism eats three hypers, and uh, there's a number Goldstone mode, mode, number Goldstone mode, there's one. This original QAIU counts as four hypers. You might say that if you multiply two, 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 you get eight, but this is a half hypermultiplet, therefore there are only four full hypers. So what happens is that out of four hypers contained in this Q, three gets eaten. One is a number goes stone mode, so I declare that in the process of partial closure, I just remove them. So you don't get anything left. This means that after the partial closure, where should I write? So, <laughs> so this, this guy just becomes, yeah, I, I have no place to write. So this guy just becomes this. So original puncture B and the gauge puncture G is identified because the flavor symmetry is broken down to the diagonal subgroup. So end result of this operation is that we started from this Riemann surface, I gave this verb, I just ended up erasing just the puncture A. That's why it's called closure of punctures. Puncture is just closed and it disappears. So this is the complete closure. So how do we analyze such a partial closure or complete closure in the non-Lagrangian case? Because this analysis was possible due to the fact that we knew exactly what 
three puncture sphere theories is. But here I'd like to apply this procedure for something we don't know the Lagrangian description. So to see that, we need to analyze that process of SU2 in a slightly different way. So let's write this there again and think about it for a minute. Well, I cannot spend that a minute just thinking, but uh, uh, this is not just SU2 A triplet, but it is also SU2 R triplet. So this plus sign means that it's the highest weight of SU2 R, and this verb clearly means that this is also a highest weight of SU2 A. This means that, in fact, a diagonal subgroup SU2 R prime is unbroken. This is similar to the procedure Nathan explained to us yesterday. He gave a wave to phi, which had both scale charge and the ghost number. And after giving a wave, the, the new ghost number is the combination of the scale charge and the ghost number in the original theory. Just as, be, as in that case, I'm giving this funny wave, which carries both SU to R charge and SU to A charge. This means, so this breaks SU to A completely, but SU to R remains. And the new SU to R charge is a combination of the original SU to R charge and original SU flavor charge. So what, that, what does this do to, to the superconformal index? So remember, in the superconformal index, you have this structure, Ka, Ka, and various other terms. So I'm just take, concentrating on terms which depend on SU to A. So these A variables are taken from SU to A. And remember, I just erased, but superconformal index has this form. Q minus I3. So this Q, Q is basically, in some sense, SU to R. So at the level of SCI, at the level of SCI, because the new SU to R symmetry is a diagonal combination of original SU to R and old SU to A. You need to set Q to be, sorry, A, A inverse to be Q one half, Q minus one half, just because of this diagonal identification. So what this does is that k lambda a, sorry, chi lambda a and k a should be replaced by chi lambda q, in, q one half, k q one half. So far so good. But this is not the whole story because I declared when I defined the concept of partial closure, we are going to st strip all of the contribution from the number gold storm modes. So, and you, you can check that this has, this part K has contributions from Nambu gold stone modes. And you need to, you need to remove it. So it's helpful to do at least exactly one example. So for SU2, this Ka has this form, 
pi over 1 So this is the infinite product form of k. And let's set a to be q to 1 half. So what happens is that this becomes 1 minus qn minus 1, 1 minus qn, 1 minus qn plus 1. And you see, this gives a divergence because n starts from 1. So this is a telltale sign of a appearance of number Goldstone mode. And because number Goldstone modes in n equals 2 theory also comes in a hypermultiplet form, in fact, these two components, two, two factors in the infinite product, corresponds to number Goldstone modes. So this is the reminder. And if you have taken the notes, this infinite product is exactly the thing I called K0. <coughs> So what happens is that at the level of the at the level of the super conformal index, um, let's say, let's say you have genus G uh, n puncture theory. So this is g equals 2 and n equals 2. Then yeah, let me just explicitly write the contribution for this. Uh, so this is k a k b and the k zero to the power. Yeah, I don't remember. This is 2g plus 2 minus n. So when n is 2, this is 4. And sum over lambda, chi lambda q1 half to the fourth, and chi a lambda, chi b lambda, sorry, chi lambda b. So let's say you perform the complete closure of this puncture. So let's close this. Close this puncture. <coughs> then, in that part of the blackboard, I said, by closing this puncture, you just lose one puncture. But what this, let's check that at the level of the superconformal index. At this level, what you need to do is to set k to q1 half, Replace one factor of Ka with K0. So this cancels against one factor. This cancels against one factor in the denominator. And this is exactly the general form of the Q-Yan Mills amplitude for the punct for the Riemann surface with one less puncture. So this characterizes the procedure. Okay. Um, you need to be, so, thank you for the question. Uh, so this K of A is basically the contribution from operators mu. This is an adjoint in SUN, right? So what happens is that mu takes values in the adjoint of G complexified because this is a complexified mu. We are taking some particular wave. So in order to count the number of stone modes, all you have to do is to act on it with SUN. This gives you some kind of a cone. So this is a subspace of GC which is whose Jordan normal form is the one I gave. So um, just using the SUN representation theory, you can identify what are the number goes on modes very directly. Yeah, that's the method. 
So, so I'm almost done. So a general, as a generalization, let's consider the type SUN theory. And let's say we have a puncture, then you have SUNA, and accordingly, there's this mu plus. If you give the biggest uh, wave, this eliminates this puncture complete, completely. Instead, let's consider the second biggest wave. So this has n minus 1, and this is size 1. So this is the par partial closure by this Young diagram, n minus 1 and 1. Now, the level of the superconformal index, all you have to do is to replace chi a, k a by the following. Again, a linear combination of SU to original SU to R and SU, some SU to subgroup of this SU n a remains. And also, there's some U1 symmetry remaining, right? U1 symmetry generated by 1, 1, 1, 1 minus n still commutes with this wave. Therefore, U1 subgroup of this SUNA remains. So if you use that, so the rule is this. Uh, and alpha to 1 minus n. So alpha is in that, this unbroken u1, which is subgroup of SN. And some factor, alpha. So this is the replacement you need to do. Um, but for today's purpose, I don't have to write down exactly what this is. This is just OQ, or one plus OQ. So now I can show you that this puncture where one puncture is closed, partially closed to this type, is a free hypermultiplet. So the SCI can be written in a standard way. So let's say this part is, has carry label B and label C, and then this has label alpha. And from the general formula, we have KB, KC, and this k n minus 1 alpha divided by k0, summation of a lambda of chi lambda, q n minus 1 to 1, q n minus 3, da da da, q 1 minus n over 2. And on the upper side, I have chi lambda b, chi lambda c, and chi lambda that. I don't want to repeat it. This part is exactly this one. Let's expand this up to Q to 1 half. So, I mean, these parts just don't give you anything up to uh, at the order Q to 1 half. And the reason you have Q to 1 half from here is as follows. If you take lambda to be a box, right? Then what you have is you have box B, box C, and this funny thing. So what this, what this is? So it's the character of this diagonal matrix as a fundamental representation. So you just sum over them. So the most dangerous part is this, right? So the most dangerous part is this. 
plus dot 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 divided by the trace of this, which is Q one minus N plus dot dot dot. Then this part two part cancels, giving you Q to one half. And similarly, there's a contribution from chi box bar B, chi box bar C, and uh, alpha inverse. So, as I told you at the beginning, the fact that you have superconformal index starting with the power Q to one half means that this is a free hypermultiplet. And you can read off exactly what is the matter content. So this is a fundamental of this SUN, fundamental of the another SUN, and has U1 charge one under the baryonic symmetry. This side is anti-fundamental, anti-fundamental, and baryonic charge minus one. This exactly fits the spectrum of Q AI and Q twiddle IA, right? Uh, you need to relabel the fundamental and the anti-fundamental of the second part, but you see that this, is, this gives you baryonic charge one, fundamental, fundamental, and this gives you baryonic charge minus one, fundamental, fundamental, anti-fundamental, anti-fundamental. Right, so I still have five minutes to go to complete the description. So why have I been doing this? <clears throat> this is to understand the duality of Lagrangian gauge theory. But as an intermediate step, let's just consider this duality. <clears throat> so now you know how to read off the matter content. This side is TN theory. This part gives you SUN gauge group. This part, I just show you, gives you N flavors. Right? And uh, this length controls the coupling constant, makes this very strong, goes to the dual frame, you get TN theory, coupled to dual SUN, coupled to NF equals N. Good, we still have nice uh, self-dual behavior of this mixed uh, Lagrangian, Lagrangian, non-Lagrangian uh, QFT. But that's not the final goal. Our final goal was that <coughs> we want to make this part also this type of puncture so that this becomes another in quark fields. So to see that, to, to analyze that, you need to close this too. Right? But the problem is, we haven't analyzed this type of <coughs> three punctured sphere with two partially closed punctures yet. So we need to know exactly what this is. But the good thing is that we already know this part is a Lagrangian theory. Therefore, we can just do something similar to what I did in the case of SU2 to see exactly what is going on. So let's do that. So this part is QAI and AI, And let's say this, is, this guy carries A index. And this guy carries I index. Right? So what, so mu, we need to give mu plus, again, vev. Mu plus is Q uh, AI, Q B, twiddle I, the C, say. <clears throat> and we need to give a vev of this form. Ah, which is written here.
One way to give this web is just to take this e itself to be Q, uh, twiddle IB, and Q AI to be this, zero, 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 one. So this has n minus two columns, and this is two, this is two, This is n minus two. So if we do that, mu multiplied in the opposite order, contracting A instead, ij, sorry, contracting A, so in the opposite order becomes this. So this is a puncture, I mean, web of this form, n minus two, one, one. So what, what happens is that if you partially close this puncture, sorry, partially close this puncture, sorry, I'm, I'm completely, this is the A index, and I'm giving I index, sorry. I index is SUN gauge. Right. So this means that I index is broken by this web. So SUN gauge is broken to the subgroup which commutes with this, which is SU2. So because of this, this SUN is broken to SU2 here. And uh, this puncture is no longer full, but this is closed by to that type. And again, you need to carefully count how many multiplets are eaten and how many number goes to modes needs to be split. But what happens is that only NF equals one of SU2 remains. So that's the outcome of this analysis. Sorry for getting over time. But the final answer is that if you start from this uh, SU n with two n flavors, this is dual to I don't know some other punctures of this type, coupled via SU two gauge theory to one doublet. So this is the dual frame you finally find. This is very complicated. So not all strong coupledness disappear. You still have this funny object remaining, but this is the fact of life. You, can, you cannot get any easier. So the final minus two minutes, uh, let's just consider n equals three case. So in this case, this part becomes uh, one, one, one. So what is a puncture closed by this one, one, one? One, one, one corresponds to Jordan block of size one, right? This means it's just zero. So in this particular case, you are not doing anything. So closure by one, 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 means you do nothing. So this is T3 theory itself, which is Aminahan Nemechansky's theory of E6. So in that case, SU3 with the six flavors is dual to Aminahan Nemechansky's E6, coupled to SU2 gauge theory, coupled to one doublet, which is what Aguirre and Zyberg found in 2007, which inspired the Davide to come up with the general method to do this analysis. So that was what I wanted to say today. Thank you very much.